<laughs> Glory! This is the night the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And, and, and you know what? It don't matter where you get wet. We should be soaked. We should be saturated. Amen? We should be drunk. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and tell him you're blessed in spite of yourself. <laughs> Glory. Uh oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Welcome to Tuesday night training. Training for reigning. Amen? Would you turn to the book of Genesis in chapter 6? The Word of God tells us in Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to Genesis 6, so don't panic. <laughs> I'm not that gone tonight. <laughs> but it says in the book of Ephesians in, Je in chapter 6 that we do not fight flesh and blood. It's amazing how quickly we forget. Amen? Isn't it? Think about it. All of a sudden, something's going on. You're going, oh, well, why did this? And why did, well, and losing the sight of influence. Well, everything starts in the spirit realm and manifests in the physical realm. But it gets in, it entices from the spirit realm. Once you agree with it, it has access into the physical realm to use you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to refresh us of the origination of things. Because in Genesis 6 and verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth that daughters were born to them. So in other words, the earth was multiplying. And that the sons of God, these sons of God are known as angels. That the angels saw that the daughters of men, and that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, of whom they chose. There was around 200 angels, according to the book of Enoch, that put on flesh and came into this realm. Obviously, the Lord did not like what was happening. Because it says here in verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for indeed he is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Of course, they were living quite longer than 120 years, weren't they? It didn't come to effect yet. It says there were, that there were giants in those days and also after when the sons of God, the angels, came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown where we get the mythical things of, mystical things of Zeus and so forth. These were known as offsprings. They produced offspring. So these fallen angels put on flesh, came in, took women. Some of them were 35 feet tall, these giants. Some of them were 12 foot and whatever. But after the four or 500 years of reproducing, some of them looked human. But they were called Nephilim. I want you to know that we still have Nephilim among us. And it says that, um, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So there was evil continually. And at this period of time, during this four and five hundred years of reproducing, these Nephilim's reproducing, it was changing the DNA of mankind. In fact, they were killing off mankind. So where the only true DNA that was left was Noah and his sons. 
The problem we have here is that Noah, one of his sons, Ham, married a Nephilim and didn't know it. That's how we got the giants and so forth after the flood. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to kill everybody. Now you got to remember that these Nephilims not only went into women, but they went into animals. And that's where you have a half man and half animal. And so, in verse 7, well, in verse 6, and it says, uh, The Lord was uh, sorry that he made man on the earth and that he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And again, Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, if you follow Ham's lineage, you'll see that the giants, the uh, uh, Philistines, the um, ites, all the ites were involved. Parasites and all the rest of them. And so when God destroyed the earth, right, these offsprings, Nephilims, when they died, when their bodies died, because they were not redeemable, their spirits roamed. And that's what we have now, demons. So when these Nephilims die that are not redeemable, it produces a demon. It's a disembodied spirit looking for his body. And let me tell you, a believer can have them, and many of them. Is everybody okay? So I want to bring us to that point of what is influence because it's still going on. And even in the word it says that before the Lord's return will be as in the days of Noah. Well, hello. And I don't think you're going to see giants. But I believe that more than Nephilims, there's more human-like Nephilim's now more than ever. In fact, we might even have a president as one. What are they, what's their purpose? To promote evil. To promote lust. Amen? Amen? You know, there's a reason why God said the ones on the right are coming in, the ones on the left are, you're out of here. Amen. You know, I wonder if there's any coincidence about the left and the right in government. But have you noticed that the left all promote abortion, same-sex marriage, and everything else? And even some of them are called Christians? Hmm? But again, they're, they're, even Nimrod was a Nephilim. He was the first true king of the world that was Antichrist. And he built a tower, didn't he? Tried to exalt himself, just like Lucifer did. And he thought he could escape the next flood if God sent one. Matthew 24. So you and I are being influenced by evil. If you don't start asking who told me that, where'd you come from, they will put you right out. Matthew 24. Glory. In verse 3. Would you read it with me? Now as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception and his power is fear. For many will come in my name. He's saying not only many are going to come in my name, but there's going to be those who proclaim to be Christians. And they'll say, I'm, a, I'm the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation shall rise against nation. This is ethnic groups. And what is behind this? We're going to get to somewhere where not only are we being influenced, but it's being released and promoted by government. It's called a spirit of bigotry. 
It is disgusting and it's terrible. It is called the spirit of bigotry. It says, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, and these that are beginning the sorrows. It says, then they're going to deliver you up to tribulation, and they're going to kill you, or attempt to kill you. And you will be high, hated by what? All nations, for my name's sake. And then many will what? Come on, look at this. Many will what? Be offended. These are fruits of a spirit of bigotry. Offense. They will be offended. They will betray one another and they will hate one another. Then false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will grow, will abound, the love of many will what? Grow cold. But he who endures to the end will be saved. A spirit of bigotry. It's intolerance toward those who hold different opinions from themselves. They're intolerance, they're devoted to his or her own opinion. They're prejudiced, they're actually hypocrites. They don't tolerate others. They're narrow-minded. And remember, this is a spirit. These are fruits, and we're going to talk more about this. They're arrogant and haughty with an attitude, of, and a state of mind is always me first, my opinion first, and no matter what, I'm going to get what I want. It's, it always has a behavior of anger. It's always angry. Anger protects and it's a provoker. Attitude and character, behavior of extreme intolerance for others. It's a spirit of bigotry. Jesus exposed it constantly. And I'm telling you, it's influencing multiple people. You know, as Christians, we don't look at any person. We determine by fruit. I don't care what culture you are or what's what. We determine by fruit. There should never be prejudice or anything. In fact, you and I are no longer from our cultural. Amen. I'm no longer Italian. Amen. I'm Christ. Amen. My blood runs from above, not from my past. That's why we need to sever cultural ties from who we used to be. If you're truly a new creation in Christ, then you're in Christ. Amen. If you're still acting the same way as, as your tradition, then you ain't in Christ. Amen. Something's wrong. It's a spirit preventing. Remember, demons put limitations. Always put limitations on us. And that limitation is to grow. So a person can never get to a place of maturity. He's always immature. There are believers that are 30-year believers, still immature, acting like children. In Luke 6. Oh, glory. You know, you think about it. <laughs> Look at the wars that are going on. Look at the spirit behind it. It promotes hatred. And of course, where there's a flawed belief system, there's a flawed perception. In Luke 6, 37. Let's speak it together. Judge not, and you will not be what? Judge. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you what? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use it, it will be what? Measured back to you. And he spoke a parable to them. He said, how can the blind lead the blind? Hmm. Will they not both fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained, everyone say perfectly trained, will be like his teacher. How many know the Lord wants to perfectly train me and you to be like him? Remember, Jesus is looking for Jesus. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the national grand forest in your own? <laughs> hmm. 
Hallelujah. Or how can you say to your brother, wait a minute. Let me remove the speck in your own eye when you yourself cannot even see the tree trunk that's in your own eye, right? Hypocrite, bigot. When Jesus used the word hypocrite, it was actually bigot. Is everybody okay? First remove the trees out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly and help your brother remove what's in his eye. Amen? Can't discern what is influencing them. See, they're trying to help someone else that they got no idea what's influencing them. They walk around with tree trunks in each eye. That's the blind leading the blind, eh? Can't discern what's influencing them and they tell someone what, <laughs> what their influence is. When they really can't even discern what the other person's influence is. In fact, they're really not even looking at what's influencing them. Go to Luke 13. Luke 13, 10. Would you read it with me, please? Now, he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and he said, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue, that religious idiot, answered with indignation. He was angry. I want you to understand that bigotry merges with religion. It is a religious spirit that merges. It promotes it. Hallelujah. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath and he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to work, therefore come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord said to him, you idiot, no, hypocrite, bigot. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it to a way to water it? So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were put to shame and all the multitude rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Indignation. They were angry. They were annoyed. They were provoked. These are all fruits of bigotry. A spirit. Matthew 23. This spirit causes wars. This spirit causes disconnect from God. And then most people who are involved in this live, they allow their emotions to dictate their decisions. Well, I feel this and I felt this and I have this. Everything they think is associated with a feeling. And that spirit provokes and pushes until it gets what it wants. And that's to provoke someone else and cause a reaction so it can get fed. Matthew 23, verse 13. Would you read it with me? But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves nor do you allow those who are entering it to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. Therefore, you will receive greater condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, 
For you travel land to see, to win and see, to win one proselyte. And when he has won, you make him twice as much a son of hell as yourselves. Woe to you blind guides who say whoever swears by the temple is nothing. But whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obliged to perform it. Fools and blind. For which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold. So again, he is expressing this arena and constantly exposing the spirit of bigotry. And I'm telling you that it's coming right out of government. It promotes it. You see it all over now. It's everywhere. It's trying to, listen, it's trying to bring division. A house divided can't stand, can it? We have more division in this country than we ever have. Proverbs 11. And it's influenced a lot of the people in the body of Christ, causing them to fall away. Proverbs 11. In verse 1. Would you read it with me, please? Proverbs 11, verse 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless will direct his way all right. But the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. The righteous of the upright will deliver him. But the unfaithful will be caught by their what? Lust. When a wicked man dies, his expectation will perish. And the hope of the unjust perishes. The righteous is delivered from trouble. And it comes to the wicked instead. The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. When it co goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, is jubilation. By the blessing of the upright, the city exalted. But it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. In Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. In verse 51. Verse 51. What does it say? You what? Stiff neck. You bigot. You hypocrite. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart where? And ears. Heart and ears. In other words, they can't hear. Their heart is always, because their, their whole focus, they can't see three feet in front of them. Beyond that, if everything's about me, myself, and I, what I want, how I want it, what I want, and I tell everybody how I feel. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the what? Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you ha now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. <laughs> but look at what he did. But he, being full, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus at the right hand of God. See, this is where that relationship is. Why? Because in reality, when there's a true relationship with the Lord, you always see him before you. If he is not before you, then there's no relationship. Is everybody with me? 
If everything that you're doing before you speak, he should be there. You always sense him and see him or there is no relationship. It's nothing but stinking religion. And it's going to be promoted by a bigot spirit. Hypocrite spirit. Haughty. Rebellious. One who listens but never hears. And that's what's happening right now. It's been going on. It's influencing the body of Christ. That's why there's so much division in the body of Christ. That's why there's so much religion. Psalm 75. Hallelujah. Psalm 75. In verse 1, please. Let's speak it. Psalm 75, verse 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks. For your wondrous works declare that your name is near. When I chose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I will set up the pillars firmly. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on the high. Do not speak with a what? Stiff neck. For exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and he exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup. And the wine is red, it is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely it dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drink, drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be what? Exalted. You know, you can't, you can't counsel a demon. It won't receive. That's all you can do is remove it. You must bind it. See, if people would self-examine and look at their own fruits and somebody else's, they'd realize what's their influence. But the problem is they're too busy looking at themselves in, in the area of protecting oneself and looking at everything else. In Matthew 15, Matthew 15. In verse 7. Hypocrites, well, well did Isaiah prophesy about you. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but what? Their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as the doctrines and commandments of men. When he had called the multitudes to himself, he said to them, hear, hear. Everybody got that? Hear, don't listen, hear. And what? Understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that you, the Pharisees were what? Offended. Why? Because they carry a spirit of bigotry. When they heard this saying, and Jesus said to them, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. 1 Timothy chapter 4. You know, I, I always sense in the area of a, a religious spirit of fear and pride. But I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit began to reveal the spirit of bigotry in it, man, it seemed to like overtake both of them. First Timothy chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Are you learning something? Oh, glory. In verse 1, 
1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Now the Spirit expressly says that in a what? Latter times. Are we in the latter times? Some will be depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who what? Believe and know the truth. They're going to be easily deceived by the Spirit. They're going to, there's going to be a falling away. How many of y'all know we're in the falling away right now? It's been falling away tremendously. 2 Thessalonians 2. Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians 2. So what do we need to do? We need to start coming against the Spirit. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one what? Deceive you. Let no one what? Deceive you by any means. By any means. For the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Well, we know it's there. It's, we're already in the falling away. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that, or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Everyone say already at work. Amen. Only the body of Christ, he who, who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to who? The working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? That they might be saved. In other words, they wouldn't turn they wouldn't learn. No turn, no learn. The no result is burn. Second Corinthians 11. Didn't Jesus say, come and learn from me? Come and learn from me? What does God say? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they refuse and reject my teaching. You know, that spirit always says the, the teachings for somebody else. <laughs> Second Corinthians 11. Verse 12. Paul said, but what I do, I will also continue to do. That I may what? Cut off the opportunity of those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things which they boast. For such are what? False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ. You know how many people, look at, in this, the Spirit always promotes self in the arena where they think that they're in a place where they're not reached yet. Only God promotes. We don't promote ourselves. Amen? God promotes, not man. In verse 14, would you read it with me? And no wonder for what? Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Wow. And we see this all over. I, I, I see these preachers calling themselves reverend that promote bigotry 
You can see that demon all over those people. They're on TV. They promote division all the time. Those guys who need to be repent, Errol Sharpton and Je uh, what's his name, Jesse Jackson. Those two dudes promote bigotry the most I've ever seen on TV. It's terrible. And all of their followers. They're going to cook unless they turn. And I'm not afraid to say their names. And you too, Obama. One day you're going to meet your maker. He's going to expose all your wickedness and who you really are. But praise be to my father. You get an opportunity to turn before you cook. James, four, James 1. Praise God. James chapter 1 and verse 21. Hey, isn't it our responsibility to expose evil? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, it's about time we start exposing evil in our own selves. And our homes. Stop petting it. Oh, it's okay. Get the heck out of here. Didn't the word tell us those who follow Jesus will what? Cast out demons, right? Well, first of all, we need to get them out of us, our home, and everything else. Amen. James 1, 21. Let's speak it together. Therefore, what? Lay aside. Lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he is. In other words, you believe you receive and you execute. If you're not practicing what you're learning, then you're not hearing. And God calls you a hypocrite, a bigot. Amen? Amen? But he who looks into the perfect law of freedom, liberty, and what? Continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If any of you among you thinks he's religious, but can't keep his tongue shut, needs to tie it in a bowl. At least they'll have some good, something good out of it. If anyone among you thinks he's religious or spiritual and can't bridle his tongue or her tongue but deceives his own heart or her heart, this one's religion or belief or spiritual is useless and stinky. <laughs> It says, pure and undefiled spirituality or religion before God and the Father is this. To what? Visit orphans, widows in their trouble, and keep oneself unspotted from the spirit of bigotry. From spirits, unspotted from the spirits of this world. Amen? We believe, we receive, and we what? Execute. It's not what comes in, it comes out. Proverbs 8. Proverbs chapter 8. You know, Christians aren't supposed to be wimps. We're supposed to be bold in the Lord and the power of his might. Is everybody there? Proverbs 8 verse 12. Let's speak it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. All right, are you ready for this one? Verse 13, come on, everybody, put your eyes there and speak it. What does it say? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Hello. The fear of the, the reverence, the fear of God 
It's to hate evil. If you don't hate evil, then you don't have reverence him. And there's really no relationship. Pride and arrogance and the evil way. You're not, we're to hate all pride, arrogance, demons. We're to hate it. We're to hate sin. So he says, the fear of the Lord is to hate what? Evil. And he explains it. Pride, arrogance, the evil way, and a perverse mouth. I hate. He says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles and all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Listen to this. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasures. Hallelujah. God wants me and you to be wealthy, first of all, in the spirit. Psalm 18. Proverbs, oh, did I say Psalms 18? I'm sorry. Psalm 18. Psalm 18 and verse 20. Let's speak it. David said, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. For I've kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him. I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. With the merciful, you will show merciful. With the blameless man, you will be, show yourself blameless. With the pure, you will show yourself pure. With the devious, will you show yourself shrewd. For you shall save the humble, but will bring down the haughty looks. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He's a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? And who is the rock except for our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and sets me on my high places. He teaches my hands to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You enlarge my path under, my, under me so my feet did not slip. Listen to this. Are you ready for this? This is why David, this is why... The Lord said, he's a man after my heart. He said, I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Does somebody get that? You know, so many times people just ignore the fruit. Ah, eh, well. They just put it under the rug and expect it to go away. No, it's going to grow. It's going to bring more demons. And you're going to have more conflict and torment. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn back again till they were what? Destroyed. We should be doing the same thing. I have wounded them so that they could not rise up. They have fallen under my feet. For you have armed me with strength for the battle. You have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You also have given me the necks of my enemies so that I destroyed those who hated me. They cried out, but there was none to save. Even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I beat them as fine as the dust before the wind. I cast them out like dirt in the streets. Hello. That's what we should be doing to evil. Amen. We're to hate evil. If you don't hate evil, there's a problem. There's no relationship. Is everybody okay? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you.
secure. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Now let's go to Jude. Let's go to Jude. Praise the Lord. Jude in verse uh, in verse seventeen, please. Jude seventeen. Let's speak it together. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be what? Mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions. Not having the spirit, in other words, not having that relationship. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in tongues, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. And I want to close at 2 Timothy chapter 3. Spirit of bigotry. Now that you, this has been imparted, you will see more of it. You will begin to recognize more of it. You'll be able to discern, discern more of it. And if you're walking with it, and then you'll be able to cut yourself loose from it. Amen? Amen. Verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch and Archeum and Lystra. What? persecutions I endured, and out of, them the, out of them all the what? Lord, deliver me. Yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse. So things are going to get worse. And if you're not willing to expose evil and hate evil, you're going to get worse right with them. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue. Everyone say continue. continue. In other words, everyone say, I must, I must execute. You must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, of course, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped to kick butt on every demon and manifest every good work. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for exposing the strategies of the enemy. We take dominion right now. We bind, blind, mute, and deaf that spirit of bigotry that's been attached to anyone in our homes or to ourselves. We break and loose us from every spirit of bigotry, hypocrite, and every other associated spirits with them, including religious, stinky spirits. We repent for even associating with them. We repent for not hating evil. We repent for not exposing ourselves. So Lord, we ask that you remove the tree trunks out of our eyes that we may see clearly. Remove the plugs out of our ears that we may hear clearly. And break the hardened heart so that we may be humble and love you. Because if we don't hate evil, how can we love you? 
Now, Father, we command these spirits to loosen to leave us and go to the pit. We ask that you wash us with the blood of the Lamb, heal us with the stripes of Jesus, and allow the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, the will of Christ, and the desires of Christ to be manifested in us and through us, that you may be glorified in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Go kick it.